This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and happy Labor Day. The day we all get to sit at home and do nothing. I wish that was true because I know a lot of people actually do end up working Labor Day. And secondary to that is when you're sitting at home doing nothing on Labor Day, you're doing it wrong because guess what? Snow is just around the corner for most of us here in Alberta and that means you got to try and be productive in the yard and that's why I'm recording this video at 10 a.m. in the morning because yeah I got to try and uh, go out there and get the grass cut get the lawnmower run out of gas all that kind of stuff got to try and really get things hammered out so folks big thing though right we've had a weekend here on Adol Any TV where we've talked all about Tyson Berry trades freeing up cap space signing Ryan McLeod what the Oilers need to do to just finish off the puzzle pieces to be a Stanley Cup contender for another year. All of that, right? And in that was a man mentioned several times in Warren Fogle. So before we get to exactly where I'm going with Warren Fogle, if you're new to the channel, what I want you to consider over the next few minutes is taking the time to think about subscribing to the channel here, joining the cause on Dolan TV, and hopefully staying tuned for what should be a fun season of Oilers coverage once again here on the channel. And secondary to that, if you're returning, why not leave a like, let me know what you think about the video here today. So, Warren Fogle, what are we talking about? Well, my friends, Warren Fogle, probably the easiest to replace player on the Edmonton Oilers roster. Why is that? Well, if you look at how the Oilers are going to stack up their uh, their forward core this year, it's quite honestly one of those things where you more than likely are going to have to have uh, Ryan McLeod at times on the wing because you'll probably have Ryan Nugent Hopkins down the middle on line three several times this season if there isn't an injury and he gets promoted to the second line or if he doesn't start there. I don't really I haven't really tried to project the lines as of yet, but that kind of takes away Warren Fogel's spot on that third line and you're not going to pay similar to Zach Kazian somebody to sit on the fourth line 2.75 especially after a year where it was I guess you could say a little disappointing in terms of his production for his contract value. Not that it was by any means a bad year. 26 points is still 26 points. However, 13 games in the playoffs and only one assist was what was really disappointing for Oilers fans. So again, you can kind of do the Jordan Everly, blame him. He didn't show up in the playoffs or kind of goofed up in the playoffs to ship him out of town. That's very typical Oilers. But secondary to that as well is you look at it here from an Edmonton Oilers perspective is do you not think that Xavier Borgo or Dylan Holloway could replace 26 points in 82 games in the Edmonton Oilers lineup? In fact, you know what? Having Brad Malone even in there for five games, you could probably get a point out of him. So that's where I'm sitting on that one. However, Warren Fogel's only 26, so is it time to necessarily give up on him? No. And again, right, with the Tyson Berry trade, we had a destination picked out for him. I was talking about trading him to uh, trading him to the Montreal Canadiens and all that. But with Warren Fogel, there's not one good destination you want to trade him to. Obviously, number one, trade him to the east because you just don't want him to come back and haunt your nightmares which is kind of what uh, has been topic du jour on uh, the Edmonton Journal this week and talking about the ghost of Jeff Petrie. But for the Oilers, right, is you just want to clear cap space. That is priority number one, but priority number two is getting something back and not screwing yourself. And similar to Tyson Berry, Warren Fogle at 26 years old coming off a 26-point season, and he signed a 2.75 mil but at the same rate, he's still got value. You can still get something. It's not a Dmitry Kulikov no return trade like we just saw to start the weekend. So keep that in mind is that's what might be the holdup here is finding that trading partner that is going to not necessarily go above and beyond, but at least give market value for players like Barry and Fogel. Because why, why is general manager Ken Holland... Would you want to give fuel to the crowd that hates you and say, oh, here's a, here's a trade. We got nothing back. Yippee, cap space. Because quite frankly, you'd still get fried for it. Even if you just free up $4.5 million in cap space by trading Tyson Berry for nothing, Ken Holland would get 
absolutely fried for it in the media and on Twitter and on Facebook and everywhere in public opinion. So in that, you have to try and work the phones. You have to try and compete guys against each other for the best return you can get, even if it is only market value. And that's where we find ourselves similar situation with Warren Fogel. Now, obviously, everybody would say, well, trade yes, Puliarvi. But yes, Puliarvi, I guarantee you, you are not getting market value anywhere you trade them just based on the headlines that have come out of Edmonton over the past several years. So Warren Fogel, kind of that medium option, right? You have mid, medium, or you have high end, medium, and low tier in terms of Barry, Fogel, Puliarvi in terms of who you're trading to free up calf space. But for Fogel, a guy that realistically could fetch you something, a guy that could still be very valuable in the Edmonton Oilers lineup, that's the other side too here that we haven't really talked about, is the fact of just how valuable Warren Fogel could still be in the Oilers lineup, even on the fourth line. Dude put up 26 points last year. If you're going to talk about having a lack of depth scoring, would you not want a guy that puts up 26 points a season in 82 games on your fourth line. I think that's a phenomenal get. At 2.75, that kind of sucks, but at the same rate, too, you look at how useful 26 points out of a fourth line or could be over the course of a year, that is necessarily the difference in between winning or losing three or four extra games and hopefully finishing first in the Pacific Division by either a long shot or just finishing there at all. Kind of similar to what the Flames did there at the end of the year with against the Oilers, right? So keep that in mind as well. Is there's not one of the same thing with Tyson Berry. It's not a you must trade him, but to trade for calf space, these two guys are the biggest victims of that calf space crunch in everybody's public opinion. So keep that in mind too. Is you have a very good player who would be useful in a certain role, who would add benefit to the team anywhere he plays as long as he plays to the same level of replacement he did last year and Tyson Berry at the same time would be a guy that doesn't hurt to keep around but at the same time doesn't hurt to trade for assets and get yourself some cap space that's the big part there so folks it's one of those things with Warren Fogle is there's a lot to be considered because it's not like he's so detrimental to the Oilers lineup that you have to get rid of him. And if he's a guy that you phase out during the year, that's what we haven't discussed with Dylan Holloway, is if it's, he's a guy that you end up phasing out during the year, right? He comes in, he plays his first 40 games, but by the 40th game, Dylan Holloway's in there. You can still trade him before the deadline or at the deadline to get some kind of assets. And obviously, as the year goes long, as long as Warren Fogel A, isn't injured, or B, isn't uh, producing anything, you can get some added, added benefits to trading them near or at the deadline. So that's the other side there, too. Folks, there's a lot to discuss with all these guys that we could potentially trade because they ended up in Edmonton, ended up on the roster, and were part of a team last year that ended up getting swept by the Avalanche in four games in the Western Conference Final. It's not like these guys totally suck, but at the same time, they are the victims of the calf space, according to public opinion, on who should be traded. Folks, I'm Tyson. This is Stolen TV up on Oda here.